Get your boy, Eric Taylor. I'm a grown man. <laughs> Big E Astrology. Oh, hope everybody's doing. Didn't look at the current chart. I know today we have Aries Moon conjunct Chiron. But I didn't look at the ascendant for this show. But we are talking about on episode 133, Knowledge is Love. The Taurus New Moon on May 19th at 11.53 a.m. Eastern, right? 8.53 a.m. Pacific. It's at 28 degrees, the sun and moon in Taurus in like 53 minutes. But, <clears throat> you know, this is really some wild energy. So before I get to explain it and before I get to you in the chat, we got to say hello to my assistant, Tay. Hi. Taters. So last week on Sunday. Oh, Mother's we, Day. Tell them that. Yeah. Uh, we celebrated. Uh-huh. And um, you made it to the so playoffs. We made it to the playoffs. And you and won. We won the playoffs. And then. The first game did, in the semifinals. And then we did the championship. <clears throat> and unfortunately, we lost the championship. But I did get um, a medal. He got a medal. I had a great time playing with my team. So. Yeah, I'm proud of Tay. So they beat a team in the semifinals. So the league was fourth to sixth graders for his age. Now, you know, a sixth grader, sometimes they can be going into puberty way older than a fourth grader. And his team only had one sixth grader. The Giants were huge. They were like all sixth graders. They lost to them last time, 30 to 28. And they beat them this time. I think it was like 33, 28. Then they played the Bengals, who they beat last week, and they lost to the Bengals 33-21. But this guy played great. Him and his twin brother, who did soccer this year, I'm very proud of the Taylor twins. You know, that Leo's son in eighth house, they got it done. And he, he had a really good season, so. And Mother's Day was great. We had a great time. We were cooking in the heat, all the moms were out there, and we just were laughing and having a good time. And I hope you guys did well, and I hope you enjoyed your Mother's Day, and happy belated Mother's Day to any of you watching. I'm going to get you guys in a chat soon. Hello. So let's set the table. May 19th, Taurus New Moon. And tonight at 11 o'clock, Jupiter enters Taurus. So right now, though, we've people have been feeling impulsive, intense energies, emotions, because the, the Aries Moon can be impulsive assertive and aggressive, but it was conjunct Chiron today. And so what happens with that is that sometimes it can create or stir up emotions from our childhood wounds. And we always have to go in and heal our inner child. You got to dig into the subconscious mind and heal those childhood wounds. And if you guys have worked with me, you know, I talked to you guys about that. It's muy, muy importante. You feel me? Because, you know, what happens is Chiron's an emotional, physical, or spiritual wound. Be careful. Make sure you don't hit the, the internet or anything. Um, it's a, you know, it's a physical, emotional, spiritual wound. And so when a moon, which is your emotions, your sensitivities, your feelings, your body, your health, you can feel because we store traumas and pain and, and emotions in our physical body. So some of that could have been coming up for you guys today, you know? So let me know in a chat if you've experienced that. But Okay, we're going to get to the chart. Then I got some announcements. You know, I'm going to hopefully be putting up the video for you now because I got my new uh, elevated service of the 5D chart. My Taurus birth chart sale still going to the 20th, but let's let's set the table. May 19th, 11.53 a.m. Okay, today's the 16th, just three days away. Taurus new moon at 28 degrees. It's a Taurus stellium. Jupiter, north node. Mercury at six degrees, okay? Uranus, sun and moon. The sun and moon are sextile to the Cancer ascendant of Mars, 29 degrees, the critical degree, because on the 20th, late night, it goes into Leo, which will activate that whole fixed square. Pluto's at zero, Jupiter, zero, Taurus. So this energy, excuse me, is 
active for this new moon, but right after the new moon, Mars activates that square, you know, that, that fixed cross, right? And what's wild is that this Taurus stellium is really, and you know, this new moon and a lot of the next new moons are going to be at the end of the, you know, degrees. So they'll be at the third deacon, right? So this third deacon, you know, it's a Taurus Capricorn new moon at 28 degrees. Mercury's in a sextile to Saturn and Pisces. We can spiritually ground with our routines and rituals to help us bring new manifestations and blessings into the physical reality and realm. Taurus is practical, stubborn, pragmatic. What you focus on with this new moon and new intentions, new earth, new blessings, you can really manifest. Try not to be stubborn, be open to changes, especially with Uranus at 19 degrees, but understand that you are trying to really bring in new things into reality for yourself. Okay. And it's, it's a, it's a good new moon, but we have to be aware with the Pluto Jupiter square squares opportunities for growth. Let's remember that, but they, they can be explosive. It can be intense. You, you know, need your crystals, your jewelry, your gold and silver. We're on the precipice of a new currency, whether it's the CD, BDC, ABC, BBD, East Coast Family, whatever. We're going to have new digital currency. They're not printing any more cash. So you've got to be smart. This is a time to invest and save. Maybe it is a time for gold and silver and crypto. I'm not a financial advisor. But pay attention to the chart. Venus is in Cancer. There's a focus on nostalgia, home, your family, safety, security. It will be soothing and pleasing to you. Right? Making the home comfortable. That Mars sextiling the sun and moon in Cancer, Mars in Cancer 29th degree is very intense emotions. It's overly emotional. It's minding other people's business. It's overprotective. We can be that way at this new moon about our values, our self-worth, our possessions. Don't hoard things. People can get extremely into, you know, like, oh, uh, another pandemic's coming, another this, another that, this, that, the stock market's crashing, recession. I got to buy 30,000 toilet papers and 200 cartons of pretzels. Easy. Be easy. The planet is shifting. Your job is to vibrate on the highest frequency of love from your heart chakra. You know, you hear me all the time and Angela Rose will be back on in June. I got Debbie Solaris coming next Monday, Akashic Records and Galactic Historian coming on May 22nd, Monday, okay? At what time? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Sorry, just checking the... You know what I mean? So understand there is a lot happening. Your job is to vibrate on the highest frequency you can. Ceres is in Virgo third house. You've got to connect to farmer's markets and focus on your health and nutrition at this time. The stellium in Taurus, it's it's good, but it can be a little wild. Mercury is just coming out of the shadow period, right? It just went direct on the 14th. <clears throat> and um, with the Jupiter descending Taurus, this is a great time, finally a break, a reprieve for the fixed ascendants, especially Taurus and Scorpio. So I know that personally for myself and my wife, but even Leo, 
right? That Taurus 10th house. Blessings, promotions in your career potentially, even your legacy, positive energy with your dad, the Aquarius Ascendant. In the fourth house, expanding your home, right? Your apartment, maybe starting a garden. We have to, in this time, spend time in nature. The trees have wisdom for you. I know it sounds corny. Trust me as a New York MC. I never thought I'd be saying it. But yo, go hug a tree. Ask the tree for your wisdom and knowledge. Ground on the earth. All the rest of May, from May to July, spend time in nature and do some grounding and earthing. The nodes are about to shift, right? July 17th going towards the 18th. We're leaving Taurus North Node, which is right now just headed towards or really, I guess, at three degrees, right? And we are really getting ready for a, a big shift. It's an 18-month cycle. So it'll be Aries North Node, Libra South Node, a lot of relationships and partnerships and business that doesn't serve us we will release, purge, detox, and let go of. This Taurus new moon, you guys let me know in your chart. Oh, does somebody donate something? Thank you. I think I see a donation. Come over here. Tay's going to get ready to read the comments. But this chart, let me know what house your Taurus is in. Because this stellium of North Node, Mercury, Jupiter, Uranus, Sun, Moon, it's very powerful, all right? So let's go to the chat and then we'll come back and talk some more about some of that other energy. Please sign up today, tonight. Email me, taylor2coachinggmail.com. Hopefully you saw it in my shorts. The truth, there's a little video for me. Astrological Coffee Talk is this Saturday, May 20th. Two hours, only $20. I'm teaching a lesson on Venus retrograde this summer in the sign of Leo. Very important, very important chart. The retrograde is from July 22nd to September 3rd. You want to know about this information. So come to Coffee Talk. And then the second hour, we'll be reading as a collective, a Coffee Talk member's birth chart. It's a lot of fun. The best two hours you can spend and $20 is a really great deal building community, learning about astrology together, and having a freaking good time. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? Capish, you get me? You got me good. So yeah, just hit me up. You can pay pay PayPal, Cash App, Zelle, whatever you need. I don't really deal with Ven Venmo and all that, but PayPal, Cash App. Soon you'll have to pay me like in NFTs, crypto, or gold or silver in the mail. <laughs> Be careful. I mean, not going to be any more cash. I mean, we're mainly digital anyway. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I'm not feeling fed now and all that stuff. Don't fall for the okie doke. Okay. Always activate and keep that, that third eye rocking. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so, okay. <clears throat> we're going to get back to the chat. I think we got some more comments today. But also, so remember this Mars sextile the sun and moon, there is this desire to protect your outward energy and your inner energy, your emotions, the emotional mind, and then the ego. But the sextile is pretty harmonious. It's just Mars and Cancer, you know, it's and it's full there. It's exalted in Capricorn. So just be mindful, you know, this Taurus new moon, don't Try not to be oversensitive. Really ground, charge up, you know, the crystals. I mean, normally do it on a full moon, but just rock with them, right? Put it on the heart chakra and just ask, right, for your, your highest good, your highest vibration. But you guys, love is the only frequency to, re, to escape the Saturnian bubble, the matrix, right? You got to understand there's so much going on right now that obviously, you know, on YouTube, I can't talk about, but I might start to see about exploring getting on Rumble too. I don't know. I'm a busy man. There's so much, right? But the point is, 
everything's good versus evil. Everything's spiritual warfare. Okay. You need to have hashtag deep water faith. Saturn in Pisces is about the spiritual discipline and routine. Right. And that's sextile to Mercury. Right. Those are two indicators for the career, the Mercury and Saturn. But it's like we are building new structures around our money, our values, our self-worth, our material items. We're building a new currency, Saturn, sextile, Mercury, Mercury, Taurus, six degrees, Saturn, Pisces, six degrees at this new moon. Jupiter is expanding it. So, I mean, listen, I'm not saying this is definitely going to happen, but there could be one Friday in July or one Friday in the next year or two or one Friday coming up soon where they dump the news cycle and be like, hey, there's no more money. No more dollars. Go go talk to him. Tell him to get away from the door or quiet down. You know what I mean? Like that, they could just shut it all down. I just say this because I want you to be aware. Okay. You're here because knowledge is love. I don't want to ever have to, you know, when you're in, you love someone and I love you guys, you should never guess, assume, or believe. When you love someone, you keep them in the know. So just be grounded, be aware, don't be overly stubborn at this time, and understand we're entering Gemini season. Juno's in Gemini. We got to be in love with the hand-to-hand -hand communications, the hand-to-hand -hand exchange. Ceres and Virgo third house is letting us know we got to get in touch with the, the, the local farms, food courts, exchanging food with one another, planting and growing stuff, right? Nutrition is key. They're putting stuff in the fruits, vegetables, and meat that you may not want. Be aware, be mindful, do some research, question everything. That's your freedom, that's your gift. You know, be very intentional about how you are driving your physical avatar consciously, right? Only five to 15% of the time during the day are you in your conscious mind, which is why you're on autopilot, wrote memory, I get up, I go to work, I do this, I do that. You know, that's the subconscious mind. So that's why you got to go in and heal it. You come to me, right? I've got a bunch of new services, and one of them is the Chiron. All right, mini, mini audio chart, healing your Chiron wound. It's only $30. You got to do this work. You look for that Pluto, Aquarius, Pluto, Capricorn houses for yourself, and then you can look at the themes there where you might be dealing with things that have to still be brought up and revealed and then transmuted out, right? Look in your Capricorn house and see what no longer serves me there, right? First house, your I am energy, right? Your physical body, your appearance, maybe working on your health. What do you need to change? Second house, your values, your money, material items, your speech, your five senses, right? How you earn money, your third house, your siblings, neighbors, local community, your transportation, your skills, self-efforts, adult relationship with mom, fourth house, the home, the emotional, psychological energy, vehicles, fifth house, your kids, your creativity, your hobbies. Right. Sixth house, work, health, hygiene, all this stuff. Seventh house, relationships, marriage, contracts you've signed. Right. We're, we're, we're purging out. So wherever that Capricorn is, eighth house, the money, other people's money, issues with the in-laws, intimacy, power control. You know, maybe maybe the uh, the occult knowledge. That can be really powerful and transformative for you. Ninth house, beliefs, philosophies, trips. Second marriage, 10th house, father, career, legacy, workplace, 11th house, hopes, dreams, older siblings, how you are on the internet, internet, 11th, third house, third house, more like social media, but it's still both the internet, your writing communications, 12th house, the subconscious, unconscious mind. So Pluto will be doing that dance June to January and then September to November. Please write it down, book it, Dano, 
purging, detoxing. Because things will seem chaotic, right? Maybe you start seeing the, 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 the spaceships and the UFOs and the aliens and, oh, oh we got the solution and, oh, we're going to save the world. And this. Listen, 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 listen. Do not fall for the okie doke. Do not, please. Right? When they just say there's some other new bird flu happening in China, don't fall for pandemic part two, okie doke. Listen, trust your intuition, the root chakra. So Lilith at this chart, true black moon Lilith and Leo, I think it's at 27, 28 degrees, it's squaring the sun and moon. You have to check in, right? Five senses, the Lilith there, your root chakra, check into your chakras, feel your physical body, your speech, right? What? It's, it's squaring Taurus Sun Moon, the Lilith. If you're not feeling it in your body, then maybe it's not for you. And it's in Leo, so check in with the root and the heart chakra. Maybe Uranus and Jupiter and Taurus and Mercury, uh, you know, and Taurus, maybe they're playing little tricks on you. So check into that Leo Lilith for this new moon. Let's see, is this really right for me? Is this what I need to do? Should I be spending this extra money right now? Should I be eating this food? Should I make sure I read my labels? Right. You want the right healthy ingredients so you're not exorbitant, you know, taking these toxins and poisons in anymore. No more plastic bottles. You buy water, get it in glasses, glass water or get a water filter for your apartment or home. Come on, y'all. You know, come on. Let's 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 rock with the energy. It's this is the map of your life. It's here to help you. All right, let's go to the chat. Okay. So. Now, you know I can't stay on forever because the Laker game's coming on tonight. So, real quick, before Teddy gets, get, gets rocking, Celtics will beat the Heat in eh, maybe five. I'll, I'll give Jimmy Butler some, no joke, maybe six games. Lakers Nuggets. Ooh. Ooh. Now, you know I'm a Jordan guy, but I respect LeBron and I wish him the best. I just don't know if they can beat the Nuggets, but I know the NBA was the Lakers, the Celtics in the finals. So I would say a shocker and go with the Lakers in seven. That's my, my head. Yeah, I guess it's my head. The heart is like thinking, you know, Nuggets, Celtics. So Nuggets in seven. But, you know, come on. You know the NBA. They want, <laughs> they want LeBron, Tatum, Lakers, Celtics. It's ratings, it's money. So officially, I'll go with Nuggets, Celtics. Lakers, they lose. Nuggets and seven. That's my NBA. I got to give you some sports. Come on, you know, I'm a real dude. Oh, what's really interesting about that, with all these planets there hitting your uh, Taurus, Saturn, you know, there might be some new business opportunities. There might be some new things that you can manifest some new foundations and structures right maybe it's a new way to heal your horse maybe it's a new partnership for riding and for the you know the farm you know with the nursing you know it, it's saturn and taurus is what being disciplined about your self-worth about your values your speech your food your money Make sure at this time you're spending time in nature, grounding on the earth. I'm telling you, I'm sitting in this chair doing so many hours, charts, whatever. My back gets stiff, my hip, back hurt. I go outside, Tay will tell you, meditate by my tree, and I do my grounding, the earthing. And what does it do? It opens it up. The frequency and vibration from the grass or the dirt soil, it actually helps to heal your body these rubber soles synthetic and shoes it's terrible for us we are supposed to let our feet and our hands sometimes i don't take off my shoes i get a little lazy but at least i put my palms 
these energy receptors, right? You can put it up and get the heat from the sun, right? And you guys should be doing sun gazing, right? And then you, you won't burn your skin. Sunrise and sunset early in the morning. You don't look the sun directly in the eye during the midday, it burn your eye, right? So sun gazing at that sunrise, sunset is very important for your health because it activates the natural melatonin and vitamin D in our body. And then you don't get burnt. You're, you're so, when the eye hits the sun like that, then it's like telling you, prepare for this. And then your body reacts and then you, you know, it integrates it. I don't know all the science to it, but I know that it works. And grounding in earth, earthing, it works. Okay. And they have mats you can get, earthing, grounding mats. You can get the copper too for your plants, things like that. Come on, y'all. We got to do it together. Raise the frequency, raise the vibration. Okay. Taurus gets underestimated and underrated for how sensual and spiritual it is. But turn that within for the introspection. Right, because Taurus is a it's it's a feminine fixed earth sign, the toddler. And you can tap in with Uranus and the North Node and Jupiter there, tap into your sixth sense. Right? Tap into your third eye. These two suckers will lie to you. See with this. Right? This is way, way more helpful. Believe me. Okay, go ahead. Irene Beck said, ah, thanks, Eric. Yeah, Irene, come on. You know I think you're dope. Uh, Irene Max said, what's the golden Chiron return sound painful? The Chiron return, I mean, listen, I, I can't, you know, I can't relay it c compared to mine because... My Chiron returned. I was 40 days, 85 in the hospital. But I will say this. You've got to make sure you take the time and opportunity to really excuse me, focus on, you know, your childhood wounds. Look at the degree point. Remember, it's a physical, spiritual, emotional wound. If it's in Taurus, 11th house, it could be around friends or groups, an older sibling, and your father's younger brother and uncle, or, you know, father siblings. You know, it um, could be around hopes or dreams, you know, performing on a stage, an arena or something. You know, I'm, it could be so many different things. But, you know, with Taurus, it's usually something with a physical body, someone criticizing, teasing, bullying. Right, something about food, issues around food, your speech, speech impediments. Think of all the things that Taurus rules, okay? All right, go ahead. Um, let's see, Temp, temp Temp Temptress. Temptress yeah. and Enchanted. Chantress. What's up, Temptress? How you said, doing, ladies? Blessing, blessings to you guys. Taurus rising with Jupiter in first house. And to Taurus. you as well. Jupiter in the first house. So you could have two or three siblings, two or three kids. You're probably taller than 5'5", five, five, Temptress. And you're having your Jupiter return. You guys look back to what was going on 12 years ago in your life. The Jupiter Taurus, the blessings, right? And I think about 12 years ago, around this time, you know, my son was turning two and we were moving out to Arizona, you know? So just think about Jupiter and Taurus and think about the cycle, right? And some of those same things might repeat but there may be new blessings because Jupiter's entering while Uranus and the North Node are here. Well, North Node and Uranus were not in Jupiter at the time, but that square to Pluto and then the, the, the fixed, uh, fixed uh, T-square across, when you have on the 20th, 21st, <laughs> Mars and Leo, you know, it can really bring some powerful changes. 
And think of it like this, Pluto's also, you guys, it's, it's really about transformations. You know, there might be a new way that you start viewing your social groups and networks. This might be a time where you're like, you know what, that's it. I am like totally going in. I'm going to sign up for Biggie Astrology's next astrology course right in the fall. And I want to I want to become a professional astrologer or I want to take one on one classes with Eric. Right. I do astrological life coaching. I teach one on one astrology. You know, I just did nine weeks of my astrology foundations course. I'm going to do it again in the fall. I haven't figured out the date yet. And then next spring, I'll do level two for those who want to become a professional, probably 10 weeks. So, but things like that, you know, because it is Mars and Leo is action. It's dynamic and dramatic. It's intense. It's like the fuel, the fire to become the creative authority, to speak from your heart. What does your heart really desire? That's what this, this Pluto Aquarius, Mars, Leo, Jupiter, and North Node. Taurus. Because North Node's going to be there too in that square. It's only two degrees away, three degrees away. So really understand. And this is really, you know, happening like May to like June. This is a very, very intense energy, but an energy for great blessings and great change. especially because the Pluto's in retrograde. So it's only going to June 11th and we're not gonna have this anymore. So, you know, one thing I would say, it may be that time to really just stop playing in the rat race, <coughs> stop blushing. Allergies have been really bad out here for us. But to really stop doing the things that you hate and say, you know what? I got one time, one life to live that I can remember on this globe. And I want to consciously dance the next 20 years, Pluto Aquarius, the way that I really dream and want to dance from my heart. That's that karmic faded energy that this fixed cross square bluesy 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 is okay this Taurus new moon is where you could set the foundations for these new beginnings do some journaling on the 19th right this is Friday Friday morning Friday night set the intentions but like this is the start of the new weekend and the new me I'm going in the Gemini season, a new version of myself with complete self-love, only with positive affirmations. Remember, I always tell you guys, retire from... If you learn nothing else from me tonight, if you could just get to retiring from negative self-talk and not gossiping, because remember, the subconscious mind is listening. Mira, escuchen. So when you're talking about, you know, Jennifer or Michael or Derek or, you know, Susie, the subconscious mind doesn't know. It thinks you're talking about you. Zip. Shh. Caete la boca. Speak positive. I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking about me too. You can't help it. It's just human nature. We all kind of gossip. We talk about, oh, I can't believe this person said that. Or they did this. Or, oh, they have no this. They don't have respect other. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to be intentional, as I call it, maniacal intentional about the positive affirmations, positive self-talk, and even sending love to the frenemies, the enemies, positive talk about everybody. You can feel weird and hokey and crazy about it, but it's a game changer for your life. So think of this Taurus new moon Friday, like, you know what? This is it. I'm going in the Gemini season, a new version of myself. Hashtag new earth, hashtag new blessings, hashtag new Irene, new Evelyn, new Steven, new Danny, new Temptress, new Eric, new Mateus, 
just do it. The energy supporting for you to do it. Forget Nike, like I'm doing it. Not just do it, I'm doing it. It's done, son. And remember, you want for nothing. Everything is gratitude. Thank the universe, thank God's source energy for receiving of the blessings. You're not wanting it. I don't want anything. I already have it. Speak like you already have it. The victory is yours. Okay, say goodbye. Bye. All right. This is episode 133, Knowledge is Love. Taurus, new moon, May 19th, 11.53 a.m. New beginnings, new foundations, a new you. New opportunities to manifest your blessings. No more negative self-talk, self-love, and focus on your new reality and new life. Follow the Lilith, the heart chakra, squaring the sun and moon. These are opportunities for growth. Check in with your physical body, the root chakra, and the heart, and see what do you really want? Who do you want to be the next 20 years? Okay? This energy is here. Jupiter is there to expand it. The Pluto is there to transmute it and transform it. The Mars is to give you the willpower, the energy, and the action. Ba -ba -da -ba -da, see? Right? The fuel. You guys, it's, it's clear. Go make it happen. I love you. Eric Taylor, Big E Astrology. Hit, hit me up. Taylor2Coaching at gmail.com. And I hope I see you Saturday for Coffee Talk. Bye, Taurus New Moon. Later. Bye. Peace.